Okay, so today's exercise um, was to look at Facebook Marketplace to see if there's any cool things. You know, instead of going shopping, because I don't want to wear the mask or whatever, I just shop online all the more. I'm sorry for the small businesses in my town. They've all gone bankrupt. They are all told to shut and close uh, while Walmart was allowed to stay open. That wasn't fair. That's a sign that there's uh, two sets of laws. If you're a small business person, you get fucked. And if you're Walmart, um, the Board of Health um, gives you a big, wide exemption, and you can make even more money. Let's talk about billionaires. The Walton family of Walmart are billionaires, and they pay the people that work at Walmart minimum wage. Um, how is it fair? It ain't fair, but that's the way it is on planet Earth. If you're a billionaire, you're Scrooge. Remember Scrooge from A Christmas Carol? That's what these people are like. They're mean-spirited. And uh, Anyways, um, a lot of small businesses have gone um, out of business in my town, just like every other town, uh, because they uh, ran out of customers. And, you know, the way it is now, even when they open up again, I don't want to go there because I, I don't want to wear the goddamn mask. So, um, I was on Facebook Marketplace, and I was looking at... Um, used cars and uh, specifically I was looking at uh, used Jeeps now in Canada a new Jeep on the lot from your Chrysler dealer is easily gonna be fifty thousand dollars and a nice used Jeep on the lot at the Jeep Chrysler dealership um, a few years old. It's at least going to be thirty-five thousand dollars. That's way too fucking high. So um, you start looking for much older cars and much older Jeeps that are affordable. I mean, if you're going to go and, and have a Jeep, a four-wheel drive vehicle that you're going to go and take out in the bush and rough roads. Um, you don't want a $50,000 Jeep. Because you don't want to even scratch the paint on the goddamn thing. It's useless. So you need an old Jeep. And I was looking at old Jeeps, and they're too expensive. Because, you know, if you're going to, in order for to get something in the ballpark of being affordable, where you're not too worried about, you know, it goes in the bush and you scratch the paint or it gets a dent... Um, you're going to look at a 20-year-old Jeep. And if it's in Canada, most places in Canada, um, you put salt on the roads in the winter um, to clear the ice to make the roads safe. But the salt gets on your car and um, it causes major rust everywhere on so if you're looking at a 20 year old vehicle um you're going to be very concerned about the vehicle because of the problem of what's rusted on this vehicle they do have one good thing that's come out over the past i don't know when it first started coming out 15 years ago they put on a, a gizmo um, that puts an electric current on your vehicle and I've seen cars that through the lifetime of the car have had this electronic uh, cathodic protection on it and it really does a good job of keeping the rust away. So um, if you do live in a northern place where they put salt on the roads in the winter, um, those um, things are worth getting and don't buy it from the goddamn dealer because they're going to screw you overcharge you like crazy in canada we have a chain of automotive stores called canadian tire 
very favorite place for Canadians to go to get stuff done. And if you want cathodic protection on your vehicle, go to Canadian Tire and you're probably going to save, I don't know, let's go with $1,200. Anyways, that's what I would recommend. But, uh, you know, on a 20-year-old Jeep, that's the concern is that it's been treated with salt and it's going to have problems. And I had an old vehicle in the 1980s with this problem. Once it got to be about eight years old, um, I was driving it down the highway and it stopped dead. I was driving down the highway in, in summertime and it stopped dead. And as near as I could figure out, what had happened was the wiring system that was... Um, what the engine was using for electricity, um, something just rotted away, rusted out completely. I don't know what it was, but um, it was pretty much time to get rid of that old pickup truck because um, I don't know exactly what it, it basically all the wiring in that vehicle uh, would need to be pulled out and a brand new going in and no one's going to do that it's going to be very expensive and no one's going to do that so looking for a 20 year old jeep this is going to be the problem so i did look and they're stupid expensive even for these used ones and the other thing is if you're going to be looking at a 20 year old jeep they use kilometers up in Canada, and they're all up at like 222,000 kilometers to 300,000 kilometers. This is way over 100,000 miles, maybe pushing more towards 200,000 miles. Now, in the old days, in the 1970s, when I grew up, um, my father basically said, um, if you got 100,000 miles out of an engine, uh, you were really lucky. So he wouldn't buy any old car that was full of miles. But these days, maybe car, maybe the engines last longer, but I doubt it. And if someone's got a, a engine that's, you know, 250,000 kilometers on it, I, I don't want it. I'm going to need a new engine in that old frame. And then I started thinking, well, British Columbia, Vancouver... Um, it doesn't, it hardly snows there, and they don't use salt. So maybe the vehicles that are 20 years old um, are going to be in better shape. And so I went on to Facebook Marketplace, and I looked in Vancouver, and lo and behold, they did have some 20-year-old Jeeps. And they were even cheaper than here, where I live in the middle of Canada. But then the problem is, um, I'm going to have to fly to Vancouver to get this vehicle. And um, the airline was advertising a seat sale of about $350 for one way to go to Vancouver. So I went and looked it up, and lo and behold, yes, you can find $351 one way to get there, but you have to wait for two weeks. If you want to go next week, which kind of would be logical because, you know, if this is the vehicle that's for sale, you want to get it while it's still for sale, and in two weeks it's probably going to be gone. And it's like two to three times the price. So um, $1,000, one way to go to Vancouver to buy the used vehicle, well, that's plus, you know, the travel costs and, you know, long drive. You're going to have a few nights in motels and gas and everything so it's going to add a lot to the price tag of this old vehicle and one of these ones in Vancouver had a rebuilt engine and it had only thirty thousand dollars since the rebuilt and I'm going or thirty thousand kilometers since the rebuilt and that's like a good idea a 20 year old vehicle you know, at least rebuild the engine if not go and put a new, brand new crate engine in it uh, so then, you know, I was talking to my cousin, who knows all about Jeeps, and, you know, we said, even, you know, Vancouver is very wet six months of the year, and maybe it's too wet, and maybe the, just the wetness is going to cause rust. So then I started thinking, you know, the desert. I thought, I need to look in Arizona, USA, for a 20-year-old Jeep that's 
worth buying. So, you know, I played with my Facebook so I could look in Arizona, and lo and behold, I found wonderful Jeeps. I shouldn't be telling you, because, you know, I don't want anybody else to go down there and get all the great Jeeps, and there's none for me. But that's the place. If you want to get an affordable Jeep, Phoenix, Las Vegas, San Diego, anywhere down there in the down south, um, they're all fixed up really nice. They're inexpensive, although with the difference between the Canadian dollar and the American dollar, they're not that inexpensive. But, you know, if you want a 20, 25-year-old Jeep that looks awesome, like you would love to drive, that's where to look. Unfortunately, the um, Canadian-American border has been closed for six months because of the COVID. So I can't go to Arizona to go and get one of these nice Jeeps to drive home. Welcome to my world. <laughs>